Hi there, and welcome to another episode of the Bearded AI Guy. Today we are talking about a project I built for my latest book, AI Agents in Action. The project is called GPT Assistance Playground, and it essentially is a clone of the AI Assistance Playground that you can access from the OpenAI site or the Chat Playground if you ever used either of those. So GPC Assistance Playground was built using Gradio. Gradio, if you haven't used it before, is a Python tool that allows you to build web interfaces. If the web interface is built with React and allows you to do a lot of cool and powerful things with Python without having to know any JavaScript or anything like that. As I said, it mimics the OpenAI Assistance Playground, but with some added extras. The whole reason why I built this was for those extras, in which we'll get into and we'll demonstrate. I developed it for teaching and demonstration, being able to demonstrate concepts, principles, stuff like that, but also the code. So there's some nuances in how the code's written and developed. You can get access to how that basically works on the OpenAI site, but I wanted to create a, a sort of a programmer's demo, if you will, as well. Obviously it leverages the OpenAI API for the assistance playground, but I built another playground, which I'll talk about in some future episodes called Nexus. And Nexus sort of follows the same playground concept, but allows you to use any agent. And it's got an extensive collection of customizable actions, which is really the power of the assistance piece. So we'll talk about installing and running. And we'll talk about how to clone the repository, navigate to the project folder, install required packages using pip, either setting an OpenAI key as an environment variable or using a .env file, and then just running the main application as you normally would any other sort of application. Okay, so now we're ready to do the installation. Before that though, let's make sure that we have the proper tools and things set up. You wanna make sure and have Git installed, Python, Python 3.10 plus or later, VS Code, which you're looking at here is the interface for VS Code, and uh, Python extensions for VS Code. You can see the extensions you have installed for your VS Code just by typing Python in in the extensions window, which is this little icon here. That'll show you all of the extensions you need to install. You can go ahead and install them. It just makes your life a lot easier in doing various things. But the assumption here is that you have some experience working with Python if you're gonna be doing any coding or anything like that. Go back to the file. So what I'm gonna first do is download um, the project source. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, we'll open a terminal and that's control tilde. So that top, very top left corner button on your keyboard. I'm going to switch to git bash just to make it more universal for everyone. Okay. Git bash is installed as part of git. Okay. So we can find the page source here it's on the gpt assistance playground i'm just going to pull down the code so just going to copy this link just by clicking the button okay it's copied let's go back to vs code and i'm going to clone this so what this will do is going to clone the source code into my folder so let's do go ahead and do that copy the full the code into my CAI projects folder. So I just have a special folder that I'm putting these things in. And that's generally a good idea to just do that. So I'm gonna just change directories into that folder. Okay. And then from there, I'm going to do, um, I'm gonna start installing the virtual environment. So what I'd like to do is just use all the tools in VS Code to make sure and do all that stuff. So, what we'll do is um, the shortcut to get to the command panel, which is this panel up here at the top, is Control Shift P. And what we'll do is just click on the Python create environment. You can just do that by starting to type Python create environment, and it'll come up. So what I typically use is the virtual environment, or if you're more of a fan of Conda, I go ahead and use that. But uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to use the virtual environment. Okay. Um, as part of your Python installation, 
One of the steps you would have done before coming here is installing Python. So we'll just choose this Python 3.10 11, which is what I have locally installed. And I'm not going to choose these options to do the inst installation of the requirements yet. Okay, I just find that this doesn't necessarily always work the way it probably should. So what this is going to do is just going to go in and create the environment quickly. Okay, now with the environment created, we can go on to the next step. I'm back here in the typical terminal. This is a PowerShell, so it's not the Git Bash. So let's open up the Git Bash again, just by clicking there. It'll open up. And I want to go in and I want to make sure and activate this virtual environment. So this is in our root folder uh, for the AI projects folder that I'm using. And I'm just going to go in here and type the activation command. So, and it's an uppercase S when using Windows operating system, uh, but a lowercase S if you're using other operating systems. So this is just going to activate the environment. And then we can do installations. To install, what I'm going to do is change into the GPT Systems Playground folder again. So let's change folders. Okay, and if you want to know the trick for just getting that quickly to finish for you, just start typing the name and then hit tab. From here, I'm just going to do a pip install the requirements. Whoops. Just get that through. Okay, looks good. Okay, and this will install everything in the requirements of the project, which is in here. So this is all the code for everything. Okay, so after a few minutes, it will have installed everything. And you can see there's quite a bit to install here. Um, a lot of it is because of the various actions, tools, if you will, that the assistant lets you do. So there's a lot of packages like MoviePie, YouTube Transcript. Wikipedia search, a whole bunch of other tools. Most of it's the tools is all the extra packages. We're in the main project folder. Everything's installed. We've done our pip install requirements. Now we can go ahead and run the project. So within the project, there is the main.py folder, which is what we'll run. But before we begin there, we have to actually create a um, either a .env file or register our OpenAI key. Okay, so what you'll do is, or place your OpenAI key here, and you can download your download an OpenAI key from the OpenAI web, API website. If you need help or assistance with that, let me know when I can create another video for that. Put your key in a file like this. So let me just copy this piece of code. I'm going to create a new file called .env, and put that there, and then I will place my key here, close that file up, and then we'll get ready to run. Okay, so we've got everything installed, and now we're going to run the application. So from the project folder again, I'm just going to type python main.py. So I've run that, and this takes a few minutes again, so I've just fast-forwarded a bit just to show you what it looks like. So what it's doing here um, with all these additional installations is actually installing packages for the local coding environment the assistant can use. So as part of the assistant, there's a, a coding environment it can use. The assistants have code interpreters, but the code interpreter doesn't allow you to upload packages or change any of the packages within the code interpreter. So this feature allows you to do that. So once it's done, you'll see that we have a URL here. This is the URL that we can go to now to see our assistants running within the Gradio interface. So let me just copy this. I'm just going to do a control C. I'm going to go into my browser here, open a new tab, and just paste that in, and we'll let it run. Um, so what we have here is the playground, which is essentially where all the assistant stuff is on the left side, and then in the center here, is the chat, which is essentially just a chat interface that you would use. Also along with uh, what we can see going on behind the scenes 
is looking at the logs. So as the assistant's doing things or things are happening, you can go into the logs and look and see what's happening. And we'll take a look at that as an example. So let's just go in and do a quick demonstration. Let's take a look at the video editing assistant. So this is one of my favorites. With most assistants, and we'll get into demonstrating various things within the assistance platform later. This video is just about getting up and running installations. And if you have any installation issues or you have some problems with getting those uh, initial things set up, ping me in the comments and we can help you fix your instructions. I always like giving all my assistants or agents a little bit of a personality. Um, not only does it help with their responses and what they're generating, but it, it's also kind of cool and fun sometimes. So we just have a essentially an assistant, video assistant with these instructions, but the power here is the actions and the tools. So these are all the tools that are available within the GPT Assistant platform. The ones that the video assistant that we're looking at right now has is add text effective images, zoom to, pan, boom, rack focus, a bunch of various um, video things that it can do with images. Uh, it can also create a GIF from a video. Uh, it can actually even also create images. It can load files, delete files. It can change its working folder if it needs to and create images. So let's just go through a quick demonstration of what you can do by using all these actions. Okay. So one thing I like to do is say, you know, create a picture, create a photo of a bearded man looking at the camera. And then make it a video and zoom in on his face. Okay. I'm going to probably try and keep this real time. We'll wait a few seconds and I'm going to switch to the logs here in a sec to show you actually what's going on behind the scene. We're using the GPT or the assistance piece and you're doing this and you had some actions programmed up. You wouldn't necessarily see what was happening with the actions behind the scenes. The logs and a bunch of the way this is programmed allows you to visualize what's happening behind the scenes. So actually it's already done. Okay, so in the logs, we can see it's gone through, it's created an image. For whatever reason, maybe it didn't like that image. It looks like it's created a few images. Then it's gone through and it's, it's ran the action. So each of these is a function it's executing. So it's, it's essentially going through, um, doing some planning and reasoning to come up with the functions it needs to execute to get all those operations done. So let's go back and look at this. And we'll zoom in. Here's our picture. And we can see there he's zooming in on his face. Let me zoom in about here because it's a little too close. Let's just play again. So zooming in on a man's face. And this is a video. It's an MP4. I can download it. There it is right there. Or it's in the assistance working folder. And I'll get into that in some later videos. But right now, so we have this. Let's go through and take an extra step here and, and ask the assistant now to make it a GIF. So please make this uh, GIF, GIF or GIF, whatever. I might have edited this out, but I'll, hopefully I'll keep it real time. That's the reason why I'm still speaking. Uh, I just want to show you how fast this is and if it's working. Okay, it looks like it's worked. So there's our GIF. Zoom down, and there's our GIF. Okay, so thank you. Again, go back through the video, and if you have problems with any of those initial steps, let me know. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope you can enjoy more of my videos, projects, and books that I've written. Thank you again.